it's hard to be a parent and it never stops. So you just have to move on. Mandeep Marty quotes in his latest book, The Hope Circuit, that you turned his personal life around and that you are the muse who turned me sunward towards positive psychology. That's pretty amazing. What a romantic. <laughs> Well, actually, <laughs> the, the real story is that, um, you know, he was working on uh, depression and helplessness. And then, you know, he tells the story that he, um, he had worked on, um, he'd worked on helplessness for a long time. And then he started to get interested in that one third of people or animals that weren't helpless. And so he started to talk about resilience and optimism. And... Um, one evening, not long after we were married, I think, I asked him if he was happy. And he just like exploded, like, oh, that's such a stupid question, blah. And um, I was like, okay. Um, and, um, and I think that's when it started. He, um, you know, I think before then, I think, he, I think he hadn't really, it hadn't really occurred to him. He hadn't stopped to think about whether he was actually happy. Yeah. Yeah, what was happiness about? He just thought it was kind of fluffy and, you know. And he was, was a this, serious academic. Yeah, he was a serious person. And then this woman that he married was then happiness. I think he was very upset. <laughs> That's actually. hilarious. But you started a whole movement. Well, I think the business of happiness is really serious. Mm. You know, I mean, I think that the one thing that we learn from positive psychology is that, you know, there are tiny little things that can make a big difference. And, um, you know, they're very, you know, I, I mean, I was saying to him the other night, you know, we have, um, the world has changed a lot, but the human heart hasn't changed that much, you know? Um, so we still need the same things that we needed a long time ago. And when you look at that, and it, people across the world, they need the same things. You know, we need to feel loved, we need to feel safe, we need to feel important. Um, we want joy. We want to be accomplished. Everybody does. And so those are the things that build happiness or build contentment. Um, sometimes I think we don't even know that we're happy. We take it for granted when we are. When we are. When we hit a bit of a wall, we go, right, I've got to work on my happiness. Well, we've got to work on seeing what's right. Mm. Because often we've got everything we need. That's what I, one of the things I would say to my kids. You don't need another Barbie doll. You know, you don't need another whatever. You've got everything you need right here. So be content. Um, so, yeah. Now, you, you say you homeschooled five children very casually, but that, to me, sounds terribly frightening. <laughs> Was it super hard? Like, are you just built of that resilient stuff? Um, I think that it was... Well, first of all, I think I didn't plan on doing that. So I started I, thinking that I would, that the kids wouldn't go to kindergarten. And then it was like, okay, well, this is working, so they won't go to school. I think in Pennsylvania, they have to go to school in third grade, or you have to declare them as homeschooled. And then, um, so I think what happened was um, that it was hard. And the thing that, um, I actually think is the hardest thing is that the moment you, um, the moment I quit school, the moment I stepped away, what I didn't realize was I would, um, I would stop mattering in the world. Uh -huh. And I think that's really the hardest thing, that we think that, um, you know, the time spent with our kids or the time spent with elderly people, whoever it is, I think we think that that is sort of wasted time. It's like the, the you know, the blank space on our resume. And, um, yeah, it and I... It feels like that. It, it does. It shouldn't feel like that, though. Should but it, it shouldn't. It really shouldn't. It mm. should feel like that's part of us growing as human beings. Yes, and one of the most important roles you could ever take on. Yeah. So it bothers me a lot that um, mothering, or parenting, I should say, stay-at-home moms, nurses, even teachers, you know, um, the people that do all of the surround care, which actually I think makes 
most of the difference, mm -hmm. um, they're not valued at the same level as the person at the top. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that that's the wrong message. I think positive psychology's message is really that it's all of the rest mm -hmm. that's just as important. Now, I think a lot of people will relate to you in feeling like they don't matter when they've given up their career and they're staying home with the kids. How did you move through that feeling? Or even just if they scale back, that they matter less. Yeah, I mean, I think that, so for me, I'm like, I teach my kids that we, there's a lot in the world that we don't know about. And you can call it quantum mechanics, or you can call it God, or you can call it a lot of different things. But they're all kind of, there's a lot of things we don't know. So I kind of cop out and I say, you know, there's a lot of things we don't know, but I believe that the universe, we're connected to the universe, and the universe, if we listen, will teach us, it'll show us the way. I love that. And if we, um, if we really listen, and we go with what our heart tells us, we'll find where we belong and what we should be doing. And we have to keep being connected to that. And that's taking so, that moment to be still, to actually hear that yeah. information. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I, it did take me a long time to decide to um, quit school. You know, they say you should make the big decisions with your head and the, or the big decisions with your heart and the little ones with your head. That's and I right. think that's true, right? That, you know, it, it took me a while and I knew I was taking a risk, but it felt like this was my part of my journey. Mm. This was what I meant to do. And so I think that it's, and I think that's an act of courage, actually. Absolutely. So, you know, it's so easy. I've seen my kids. It's so easy to go with everybody else. And I've always encouraged them to really look inside and say, what, what do I think, what is the right thing for me? And that's what makes, that helps them flourish. It makes them be authentic. It makes them find the right relationship. It makes a lot of things Things get easier if you're not, if you're doing the right thing, I believe. Because you're not fighting the universe. Mm, so um, you're in the flow. Doesn't Marty talk about the flow a fair bit? Well, flow is about finding things that you love to do. Um, where time stands still. Where time stands still. Mm. Well, you're not going to find that if it's not something you love. Absolutely. So there's that. Um, but I think that... Um, a lot of these things are difficult, but every so often you just get like a little tap from the universe that says, this is the right thing, it's going right, this is... So, as I said before, you know, every year I'd homeschool, things would get a little bit easier, but it was kind of like getting a little tap from the universe saying, you know, you're on the right track, this is working. Um, bit of synchronicity. Synchronicity, yes. <laughs> a lot of synchronicity. Talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I read it. Um, so yeah, I think that's true. Um, but I think also it's, I don't want to appear like I'm saying all of this is very easy. Mm. I think it's hard to um, follow your passions and you have to keep doing it for a long time until you start seeing that actually it works. Mm. And actually, you know, it's long-termism as opposed to short-termism. Yes. That we have to invest in life. And maybe stop along the way and sort of look back and think, oh, I actually have come a yeah. fair way where it feels like I'm not really getting anywhere. Well, in homeschooling, one of the wonderful things you do at the end of every year, you put together a portfolio of all of the work. And it's sort of an, it's an excuse to kind of sit down and look at what you accomplished. And um, there are no grades in homeschooling. So you sit down and you look at what you actually accomplished and you look at what was good and what was bad. And it's sort of a, a measured kind of, this is good, that is bad, so next year we do this. Um, but it's also like, look what we accomplished, look how further there is to go. And it's sort of a, a grounding thing, you know? You can both feel proud, but you have more things to do. And so that was something I wanted my kids to see, that you can feel accomplished, um, one of the funny things about accomplishment I just wanted to put in here was, and I'm sure people would understand this, that when my kids were little, I would have goals like to bath all the kids and cut all their nails. And that felt like an accomplishment if I could do that in one day. Because if you think about it, even with the three big kids when they were little, that was 60 nails I had to cut. Oh my goodness. That seemed we like an... like that. Yeah, it seemed like an accomplishment. What a task.
So yeah. But yeah, so... I like that, breaking it down into small, like things yeah. that we take for granted. Actually looking at it like, that was an accomplishment. That was an accomplishment. Yeah. But also, why am I bothering with this? Why am I not, you know, why do I care? And a lot of it is, there's a big picture here, which is, I want my family to have this big, you know, place called home. I think home is really important. So there was um, a psychologist way back, I think in the 50s maybe, um, who used to talk about bolstering and buffeting. And he talked about marriage, so that a good marriage bolstered you and buffeted you. But I think that's a good idea for everybody. You know, we need relationships where we matter. Mm. We need relationships where they bolster and buffer us and we do the same for someone else. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think part of coming out of that for me was realizing that I was on my path and I kept on, I was still on the right path. Um, and then I think you have to encourage other people, show them how they matter. Mm. And that's important. Really From little kids to old people. Did you ever think, I quit, this is just far too hard? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too many times. It was hard. Can't say, go and see the headmaster. <laughs> Wait till no. your father comes home. No, I couldn't say that <laughs> because it was down to me. Mm. Um, so, yeah, there were some real difficulties. Um, and, but you know what? The difficulties, I think, uh, were often my own making. I would be pushing too hard. Really? Yeah. So um, sometimes I would just have to like back out and leave the kids alone. And they would actually sort things out better. Without you there? Without me there. It's interesting. And often I think that I would be pushing too many things like let's do this and let's do that. And then I'd feel so annoyed when they weren't like happy or grateful. But actually it was me and if I'd left them alone maybe they would have been okay on their own you know um, so I have a lot of stories about how I mean they all had so many bruises <laughs> and broken bones and things but what would happen we had this swing set and I would kind of like peek at them they would do terrible things like climb across the top but if I said something if I walked in and said something somebody would fall and get hurt if I didn't if I left them alone they were usually fine. So I learned to trust my kids right. and to take time out um, and to leave them and let them be bored, let them fight it out. Not all the time because I didn't like that. But and not many kids get a chance to be bored anymore. Do you find that? It's just the moment they're bored, where's the iPad? There's so much stimulation now, isn't there? Yeah. But getting bored helps yeah. their creativity, really, doesn't it? Well, I think that the kids will figure it out. We know we've had hundreds of thousands of years of kids having been sent out into the street to play. And, you know, often times when the kids were being crazy, I'd just go to the park. Mm. And I would sit down and they would play. And that was much better than anything else. And often, problems that would arise would be because of things coming in or me pushing too hard or we would just have to take the time out um, mm. or just say okay no more tv today no more this no more that just go and so they had a lot of time on their own which i think a little bit of something is better than a lot mm. and i think one of the frustrations is when you feel like you've just given and given and given and they're still crying and whatever. You know, we need to let it go. Yeah, we need to care right. a little bit less. You know, there's a, a, there's a very good um, concept of benign neglect. So when you know they're safe, you know that nobody's gonna kill anybody. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's okay to walk away and to care a little bit less about are they this, are they that? Because kids will take care of themselves and they'll come out and they'll figure it out by themselves. We don't have to interfere all the yes. time. Yeah, we always, or well, most people I know, feel like they need to be there fixing everything and no, that's not the case, is it? It isn't. It's great advice. Yeah. Love it. I want you to write a book. <laughs> Can you write a book for us? I don't know. <laughs> I think you'd have a lot to offer 
the world, and the, especially in the parenting area, my goodness, if you can get through that, that's, that's hard. That is amazing. It's hard to be a parent, and it never stops. No. So you just have to move on.